So this is what to do if you suspect eBay is throttling you. So what is throttling? Uh, to put it in layman's terms, uh, eBay throttling is when you feel as though your sales go from one to the other, as though eBay is promoting your sales, and then eBay is basically hiding your products. Like they're promoting them, they're dropping them, and so there's a you know conspiracy theory that says like once you sell a certain amount for a day, they basically cut you off, and your stuff is no longer promoted as highly as the others. This is very woo-woo. Um, now, none of us know exactly what's going on with eBay's algorithm, but it is, it is very easy to get sucked into this thinking. Um, let me just give you an explanation of what happened for me this past week. Uh, yeah, today is the 26th. I'm just now getting this whole thing resolved. But a few weeks ago, I had a sale. It was a $400 sale. So I make the sale. The guy immediately opens a dispute, which is not a cancellation request. He char he did a charge back with his credit card. Actually, it wasn't credit cards through PayPal. But he did a charge back, which then I got, because I'm a part of uh, managed payments, I got a message that I'd never gotten before. Oh, I just got paid for something. Okay, that's cool. Um, so in any event, he does a chargeback. So he paid for the item, bought the item, paid for the item, automatically did a chargeback, and I got a message saying that there is a dispute. Do you accept the terms? I said I accepted the terms. The money went into holding, right? They took the money from my account, went into holding. I ended up asking the guy, I reached out to him and said, you know, you could just cancel this uh, sale. He goes, actually, I didn't mean to do this, this transaction. This is, you know, this is nonsense. I'll explain this later. But he says he didn't mean to, that this was a genuine sale, that he wanted this item. I said, well, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens with the whole chargeback situation because now the funds are being held. He contacts PayPal, I contact PayPal. I contact eBay. They am telling the same thing. Do not refund him. Do not cancel it. They're, the money is already being held. You've already accepted it. Whatever. So the money's taken out of my account. A week goes by. The guy keeps contacting me. You know, he wants to say, you know, like, uh, e you know, PayPal told him that I could send it because it already it was. Uh, I said I can't do that. It's being held. I've already been, you know. I've already went through all the, I've done what I need to do, right? I can't send the item because the item, the, it, there's, I already accepted the dispute. And I can't refund him again because those funds are already being held. And if I refunded him outside of that, then that would be like giving him 400 bucks for no reason. You know, he'd be getting twice the payment back. Okay, so this is a week that goes by. After a week goes by, the buyer gets frustrated, I believe, opens, uh, changes the terms of the dispute to item not received. I ended up accepting that one again. And at this point, we're now a week into it. Me and the buyer are both aggravated because at this point, I'll try to post a picture of this. My sales from went right up here plummeted. From the from uh, after a week of that nonsense going on, when it was overdue, when as soon as that one went overdue, because I had a, a second sale, I, don't, I should have mentioned that, I had another sale about uh, roughly five days after this one, for a chair that I only do local pickup on. It's a it's a big chair. It's a antique chair. A buyer from uh, San Francisco bought it for 125 bucks. I immediately contacted the guy. Said I do not ship this item you will have to find a way to pick this up he accepted this is already this has been two weeks ago he still hasn't contacted me again he gave me 125 dollars i don't know what's going on i'm still sitting on the item but in any event i've got two overdue uh things at this point my sales like this basically straight across the board these two things happen where this one's overdue for a week all of a sudden my sales drop down basically to almost nothing 
Now, in my mind, I know that there's something going on. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. But there's something going on with the algorithm. I have no idea. But to be like this across the board all year long, to all of a sudden having a over, this two overdue items drops you down to basically nothing. I, again, I will try to post a picture of this. It went from just like this to I think it was I think it dropped down to uh, like 25% of what I was selling for every week for the past you know year basically up to this point and then so after the next so that from that point for the next week my sales remained at this level just the other day it goes through so three days ago the dispute goes through the buyer does not does not rebuy the item so I don't know if he was playing some sort of game he wanted to try to see if I would refund him a second time or if I would just ship the item. I have no idea. I didn't. Um, I still have the item. It is back up for sale. And as soon as that dispute clears, straight up did my sales go. Now, I don't know. None of us know. We don't know what eBay's algorithm is. It's very easy to see this and we can all, we all get that sort of feeling, you know, and you can't, you can't ask people over at eBay because chances are when you call that customer service hotline, you know more than they know. I mean, hands down, if you've been doing this for any length of time, you know the rules better than whoever is contacting you. That's another pro tip that if you contact anybody and you don't get the response, ask to talk to a manager. The moment that you ask to talk to a manager, they're going to say, well, I can try to help you, this and that. No. At that point, just say, no, I would really prefer rather to speak to a manager. They will say, well, then we can have one call you back. I say, fine. At that point, they will either disappear from the uh, phone a minute and then have someone call me back, or they'll come back and just do, you know, go with whatever you're saying. But just try to know the rules. You know, that's you're going to want to do that with any sort of uh, thing in your life. You know, whether it's AT and T you're dealing with, you versus whatever it is. Try to know the rules because it's like a it's like a barrier. It's a wall. You call them; they're there to basically just like just get rid of you. They want to they want to take care of you the, the least efficient way possible. And those people do not know what they're going what's going on. Um so at any event, three days later, sales spike, you know, after the moment that goes through, sales spike back up. So that whole week, I'm sitting there, like all of you have done, I'm sure if you're watching this, you know that. You know that feeling of, all right, what is going on? Uh, why is this happening? This generally it seems to happen in my experience. Once you hit that threshold, if you have like a decent two hundred plus dollar sale, the rest of your day is done. Like that's it. I'm not saying all the time, but generally speaking, once you hit that threshold, once you have a decent sale, your sales point. Now, what does that mean? Well, that could just be retail. I don't know. Could this whole week, this past week, just be what happens in retail anyways? Because Retail is like that. Like you don't know. That's one of the things about this job that makes it very difficult. Is that you only have so much control. You can't you can't force people to buy something. If you lower it, it doesn't really matter how far down you're going to go. There's when you're buying something for yourself, just think about that. There's not really that big of a difference between spending $30 and $50. Once you've hit that threshold of 30 to 50, it, at that point, if you want the item, you're willing to buy it, whatever, whatever the cost is. It doesn't really matter. You know, I'm not saying that astronomically, but from, you know, there's not a really big difference from 30 to 50. And anything 30 and below, people have no problem spending $30. If you're, if you're buying a coffee every day for six, seven bucks, you know, or God forbid you're a smoker, you're spending 10 bucks a pack of cigarettes a day, like 20 bucks, 30 bucks is nothing. It's not the it's not the same anymore. So, so what can you do to help yourself when you start getting these feelings like eBay is throttling me? There's literally only one thing you can control in this whole in in everything that you're doing. The the only thing you control in this whole business, like you you can control a very very little amount. But the main thing that you can do is just listing more items. The more items that you have up, the more items that a buyer will see, and the more items 
Once they click on that item, they will see other items below that you have for sale. So it's all just getting people to see your items. Another thing you can do is there is a, uh, what is it called? It's not, it's, I don't know if it's called promotions, but you give a certain percentage of your selling price to eBay. It's like an advertising fee. Now there's three different things that they, they there's three different options on how to price it. One is an adjustable price that kind of fluctuates. There's one that just, just whatever eBay recommends, I, I would never, never do that. There's only the one option that I would ever suggest to do, and that is picking, picking your price. For me personally, I do 1%. Because if I have an item, and let's say that there's three, generally speaking, what I'm buying and selling is kind of different items. I mean, there's nothing that's really the same. I'm not buying video games generally. So if there's three of these in the world, and I have mine, you know, an advertising fee of 1%, and the other people don't, then mine goes at the top. But I'm not gonna, I'm not going to have a race to the bottom. That's not something I'm gonna do. My time's worth more than that, your time's worth more than that. Do not do that. And to have just eBay's suggested price, it would automatically suggest the highest price possible. I mean, that's what I would do, that's what you would do. That's just what they would do. So, the one thing that I can suggest that you do is that when you're having these feelings is not to get down. That's a, the worst thing. The worst thing that you can do is get into this idea that eBay is throttling you. Go find, go find other places that are gonna, you know, uh, you know, they're gonna confirm your suspicions. If you find yourself on the eBay forums, the moment you find yourself on the eBay forum, you need to stop and ask yourself what the hell you are doing, because there is nothing but negativity there. It's like anybody that has a bad experience, they look at the reviews for that company. And nine times out of ten, the people that are giving a review are, get, are, are pissed off, they're upset, and you're not going to do anything beneficial for yourself. The only thing that you can do to help yourself is to find more items and to list more items. That is the only thing. Um, so this has been my experience the past week. This has been what I've been dealing with. This is why I struggled last week to get another video out for the what sells thing because it was just... It was very time consuming for me to go out there and I had to find more things. I didn't, you know, I was struggling myself with this whole throttling thing. And I've been here for seven years. I've been doing this for seven years. I know the, the, the swing. I said it a few video ago, videos ago that this is probably going to be the worst summer ever for me in eBay sales because of what happened, because of the pandemic last year, because last year was so great. This year is going to feel super shitty. And this is just normal. This is, right now, is the time when people are outside. Like, it's raining now. This weather sucks. But people are generally outside. They're doing things. They're getting out there. They're, they're, they're having fun with their families. You know, they're, they're spending time outside. They're not, what they're not doing is they're not inside buying things. But the only thing that you can control is to put more things out there. Because they will eventually sell. So when winter comes around and people are back inside and they're buying things again, your sales are going to go through the roof. And all of a sudden, it doesn't, it's not going to matter about the whole eBay throttling thing, right? So the moral story is that there is nothing we can do about eBay throttling. Whether it's legitimate, whether it's a conspiracy theory that's just way too easy to get sucked into, including myself, the only thing that you can do is you need to focus on your business and how to make it better. And it's not sitting there and worrying and typing away and you know having a pity party basically because it's very easy for me that this past week it was five hundred and twenty five dollars that I'm assuming not to mention this last return I just got yesterday for two hundred and fifty bucks because that was it couldn't be delivered in Canada so that's what is that two fifty plus four hundred is six fifty plus another one twenty five is seven seventy five over the past two weeks that I'm imagining I'm not gonna continue to have right the 400 bucks is gone the 250 uh, I'm gonna have to take back and I'm gonna have to contact her ask her for new shipping or you know however that whole thing works out but it's it's up in the air you know and it's very easy to get down and start thinking about scammers and this and that and other bullshit but at the end of the day that does nothing for you absolutely nothing you just need to focus on what you can control and that's listing more items selling more things as best as you can. That's the only thing you can do. Get out there, 
That's the fun part anyways. Get out there and go find things. I mean, that's the whole reason I do this. I, I hate listing. I hate shipping. I hate everything about that. The one thing I hate most of all is shipping every single morning. I don't have to do it today because today's Saturday. But uh, every single morning, Monday through Friday, it's like I dread it. But I get it done. I wake up in the morning first thing, knock it out. I'm done by 7.30. And I'm done for the day. Basically, it's, it, everything after that is, is cake. I get to go out and find things. I'm like a goddamn treasure hunter. It's, it's wonderful. But, again, focus on what you can control. Thanks for watching.